So right now, Judge Zenas is hearing a case involving Officer Pirelli of the U.S. Park Police, and in that case, every single fact is entirely fabricated. So this is one of Paula Zenas' lawyer friends who's suing for a million dollars. And I'll tell you what happened in the case. The the officer did absolutely nothing wrong and nobody got hurt either. What happened is there was a woman, an African American woman, like, you know, she's a good woman. Now she hasn't done any crime, she has no bad record, nothing, and it was just unfortunate that she shared a name with someone who had a warrant out for their arrest. So she was in a car on the Suitland Parkway. You know, she owns the car, and she was in the car on the Suitland Parkway. Now, if you know, the Suitland Parkway is a really bad neighborhood. It goes from, like, Anacostia into a really bad part of PG County. And that's a really high crime area, and that's the kind of place where D.C. residents and PG County residents usually ask for help from federal law enforcement. Uh, to take care of some of their crime problems. And here it works out good because the Suitland Parkway is in fact uh, a National Park Service highway. So the cop is already there. So he sees a car filled with people uh, who all have hoodies on. And so it's not like some kid walking with a hoodie in a neighborhood. This is four people in a car all with hoodies on. And it's a well-known uh, area for for carjackings, and always the victims of these carjackings are also African American. So that's usually how these carjacking these carjackings take place. So you know he does get the car on his radar, basically. You know, not his speed camera radar, not his speed radar, but you know, in his mind. So he's looking at the car. And so he runs the tags, and when he runs the tags, it's showing up as this this woman. She has a warrant for her arrest. And what's happened is, the type of warrant that it is, it's, it's actually a civil contempt warrant. So another woman with the exact same name as her uh, had a bad debt. So, now the other woman also has some other crime issues, but that's not the point here. Uh, it's a civil contempt. I think she owed like $3,000 as a loan. And what happened is when the process server came to her and stuff, uh, she never responded and there was a a judgment against her. Now, I'm not talking about this person. I'm, I'm talking about the, the actual person. Okay, so this person got picked up for the mistaken identity. So, the, and, and what, and, and it, actually what's happening is in some other states, they have actually made rules that they stop doing this kind of stuff. But in Maryland, apparently it gets done, which is like, you know, somebody owes money. Uh, they don't respond to any of, of the court papers. And then the, the person who gets a a judgment against them, they have a right to request the judge to issue like a bench warrant. Okay, so when the bench warrant gets issued, it's not like a criminal case. The judge doesn't know what the person looks like. So the judge just issues a warrant with the person's name and the best information he can get without like a physical description. So, but the warrant is on the book saying if a cop sees her, they're supposed to pick, you know, arrest her and take her to the district court for processing with, with the judge. So that's exactly what Officer Pirelli did when uh, he found out it's matched up to her tags. And also what happened is it's the computer system who made it look bad. It's... It, even though it's a civil contempt citation, uh, it said uh, of, it said fugitive from justice. So when it says 
when it says fugitive from justice it sounds like the warrant is for some crime but actually it's just a civil contempt warrant but that's not the officer's fault and that's the kind of thing the officer has immunity because uh, it's 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 really a an honest mistake and it's not even his mistake it's the computer system which had it done this way and so uh, so he does arrest her and in no way is she harmed so he takes her from there from the Sutton Parkway he takes her he takes her to Upper Marlboro to the the courthouse or I, I guess or the jail somewhere and uh, you know she's seeing a district court commissioner and everything gets done within like two hours okay the district court commissioner figures out that she's not the one who did anything wrong and the whole time she doesn't you know she's not really gone through the regular formal booking process so it's not like she actually went to jail and they issued her like a like and orange jumpsuit or whatnot. No, she got arrested by the police officer. He took her to the district court commissioner. Uh, she sat next to the district court commissioner and the district court commissioner figured it out that it's not her. But it's just a legitimate case of mistaken identity. And, um, you know, obviously she did nothing wrong. And uh, she had the problems for like two or three hours when all this was going on. But she didn't suffer any physical injuries. So, and so then, but then they make this out to a $1 million case. And that's absurd, you know, and, you know, not only shouldn't it be for that much money as $1 million, but the officer has immunity for this. I mean, this is exactly why the officer has immunity. So what Judge Zinner says is um, the officer does not have immunity for this because he should have known that it's not her, but he had no way of knowing. So what, uh, what Judge Zinner does is the person, the the real person who had the warrant for her arrest, uh, that warrant was issued in Frederick County, Maryland, which is a different county than PG County, Maryland, which is like 70 miles from there. So, but there's another warrant. Well, the that person also had it it wasn't really another warrant she got arrested for a crime and she wasn't really any fugitive but but it, it's it's standard practice when someone gets arrested for a crime and gets processed they get an arrest warrant even though the person is already arrested so what judge Zinna says is that's the warrant the officer Pirelli was looking at. But in no, and, and, and that warrant came from Washington County, Maryland, which is even a little further up from Frederick County. So, so that's the trick that Judge Zinnes does. Although the officer uh, relied entirely on the Frederick County uh, civil contempt, uh, you know, the civil contempt warrant, that's what he relied on. And when he relies on that, uh, you know, it's not even his honest mistake. He didn't do anything wrong. It's the computer system and this weird law that makes people who owe a debt kind of come up in this kind of situation. So that's the only thing which really went on. So Judge Zinnes knows that she can't make it stick using the Frederick County warrant. So what Judge Zinnes does is she makes up fake facts. She says that Officer Pirelli looked up the Washington County warrant and then he was arresting her for the Washington County warrant and the Washington County warrant since it's a criminal warrant 
it has the full description of what she looks like. So in that case, if Officer Pirelli was arresting her for the Washington County warrant, uh, that Officer Pirelli would know what she looks like and then he should not have arrested her. That's true. But he wasn't going after the Washington County warrant and he could not go after the Washington County warrant. There was no open warrant. The Washington County warrant is just a standard warrant issued after the person is arrested. So that, so that person had already been arrested and then they had a an official warrant issued, it did not mean that um, they were out on the lam. You know, you know, so they have a warrant issued, but it's not an open warrant because the, because the person is already there in jail. So it has nothing to do with the Washington County warrant. Officer Pirelli and also the, the computer system would not show that outstanding warrant because there's there never was in existence such an outstanding warrant but so what judge zinnis does is she goes into the maryland case search records and that's how she picks it up but that information does not you know would not come up as an open warrant so she's completely confusing deliberately confusing the two separate warrants trying to say the officer was trying to enforce the Washington County warrant which he never could have even tried to do because that was a close warrant so and, and then even for the so 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 that's so she she calls that one violation against officer Pirelli and which he doesn't get immunity for is what she's saying. And then the other violation against Officer Pirelli is, uh, she says that Officer Pirelli um, for no reason stopped uh, the car. But Officer Pirelli had a right to stop the car because then it's, because, um, they have a different set of rules that apply in high crime areas. So when you're in a very high crime area, you don't even have to have like a broken tail light or run a stop sign, whatever, to have a cop stop you. So that's what the Supreme Court has said. When you're in a high crime area, uh, you know, the officer can uh, stop you just to check you out kind of thing. So in, in both ways, the officer did nothing wrong. But Judge Zinnis is insistent on making up these fake facts and you know she 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 makes up this strange word she kind of says oh what happens is the cop and the person he stopped uh, they all kind of see things through a kaleidoscope well there is no kaleidoscope I mean it was kind of black and white you know you kind of saw uh, exactly you know facts he got some information on his computer system and from her perspective uh, you know she knows she didn't do anything wrong so there really isn't any kaleidoscope. See, what Zinnis is saying is, this: a, you know, everyone sees things by a kaleidoscope, and then Zinnis gets to decide exactly what the facts were, even though she was not there. So, what she says is, the cop and the person he stopped, uh, they both see things through a kaleidoscope even though they were there and they saw the stuff but and it's really not and it's really not a matter of seeing two different things it's you know it's not seeing dude it's not you know they both did not see two different things it's just that from her perspective